In Access, expressions are used for a number of tasks, such as performing calculations, testing for valid data, and creating filters. They're somewhat similar to formulas in Microsoft Excel, but expressions are used in a wider variety of contexts in Access. In this video, I'll show you features in Access 2010 that help you enter expressions more easily. One common use for expressions is to calculate new values based on other values in the database. For example, I'm going to add a calculated field to the customers table. I want the new field to concatenate the two name fields together so that it displays the last name, a comma, and a space, and then the first name. I scroll to the right and then click Click to Add and then point to Calculated Field. I want the new field to contain a text value, so I click Text. Access opens the Expression Builder. I'll click More to show the Expression Element lists. As you can see in the first list, expressions can contain identifiers, such as table field names, as well as functions, constants, and operators. These lists help me determine which identifiers and functions are valid for the context I'm in. The lists will display different values in different contexts. Plus, if I click a function, I can see additional information about the function down at the bottom and click a link for more help. I can double-click items in the lists to add them to the expression. I'll add the last name field from the customer's table. And I'll add the ampersand operator, which is for concatenating strings together. Or I can just type in the expression box, which is a little faster. Notice how when I typed the F for the first name field, Access suggested some possible values. I can use this feature called IntelliSense to quickly select identifiers and functions for my expression. If I select one of the functions in the list, Access displays information about what that function does. Once I've selected an item, I can press Tab or Enter to add it to the expression. So the expression looks pretty good. I have two identifiers, a short string enclosed in double quotes, and two concatenation operators tying them all together. I'll click OK and Access adds the field. Access selects the field name, so I can just type in a name at this point, and I'll widen the field a bit. And now this field is ready to use. On a form or report, I can enter expressions directly into the property sheet. For example, I'm going to add a text box to this form and have it calculate a value. I'll make sure the text box is selected, and if the property sheet is not already displayed, I click Property Sheet on the Design tab. In the Control Source property box, I start the expression with an equal sign. The next part of the expression is going to be the identifier for the List Price field. I just type the letter L, and the IntelliSense feature shows me a list of choices that start with L. I type a few more characters, and the list shortens to just the item I want. I press Tab or Enter, and Access adds it to the expression. Now I'll type the rest of the calculation. I want to multiply the list price times 0 0.08. Of course, I can always use the Expression Builder here just by clicking the Build button in the Control Source property box. I'll set the format to display currency, save the form, and then switch to Form View. Let's see how IntelliSense works with functions. I'll switch this back to Layout View, and I'll add a new text box to this form that will display the product name only without the words Northwind Traders at the beginning of the name. I'll change the label to Short Name, and in the Control Source property for this control, I'll click the Build button. I could type directly in the property box, but the Expression Builder gives me more room to work. I'll type an equal sign and then type the word mid, which is a built-in function that lets me extract part of a string value. As soon as I type the opening parenthesis, Access displays the syntax of the function. This function accepts a string, a number specifying a starting position in that string, and another number specifying how many characters I want to return. The length argument is optional as indicated by the square brackets. 
In the tooltip, the function name is actually a link that I can click to open a help topic about the function. Here I see that if I leave the length argument off, Access returns all characters that it finds after the start position. I'll finish typing this expression. The string I want to start with is the product name field, so I'll double click it in the IntelliSense list. I'll type 19 as the start position, and I'll just leave off the length argument. I click OK, and now I have a calculated control that shows me the product name minus the Northwind Traders brand name. In a query, I can use IntelliSense to type query criteria directly into the query grid, or I can click Builder on the Design tab to open the Expression Builder. And there are many other places in Access where expressions are accepted, but in each case I know that IntelliSense and the Expression Builder will help me enter the expression quickly and accurately.